my baby's home Cairo Cairo is my baby's home One bad Cairo night won't be long Women in Cairo They will treat you kind and sweet Women in Cairo They will treat you kind and sweet Catch you around and take you off your feet and knock you, peach you, and cut you too. Shoot and knock you, peach you, and cut you too. They get through the graveyard then for you. Welcome to live stream number 90. All right. Great to see you guys. Patrick is with us. Yeah, I'm trying to put this, these comments on there. Yes, there are. Great to see you, Patrick. The Great Britain from Wantage, Graham. David, thank you for a wonderful stream today. Your morning, my noon. Great playing. I played Amazing Grace with you. That's right. That's right. Uh, not with you, along with you. All right, you guys mm -hmm. greeting each other. That's fantastic. I love to see that. <laughs> All right, finally figured out how the greetings work. That's great. But there's one thing on YouTube that I don't understand. When In some live streams, when you put this uh, little at sign and you start typing somebody's name, it pops up so you can just click on that. But on some of the live streams, let's say yours, David, when I'm trying to, to say hello to somebody else, then I need to type the whole name and then they will be tagged and see their own name in the chat um, selected yeah I don't know Norwegian attack hello Geir great to see you all right guys um, so uh, the first thing we always do is going to be the blues backup. Today, another a little bit different pattern from 
the slow blues in E that we usually that I usually play here. But uh, last week it was uh, this. Uh, show it when I um, change the angle for my cameras but this uh, this week we're gonna do something else so I'll um, and then the theme for today is still basics but now in open D we'll continue uh, the song we worked on last week glory glory hallelujah when I lay my burden down and I will incorporate some finger picking patterns there or finger style patterns it doesn't always have to be alternated bass and all that stuff but more about that when we come to that part so first live blues backups you guys ready standard tuning nothing special and this is what we're gonna do e so last week just a little reminder for those of you who were there and uh, maybe uh, an inspiration for somebody who wasn't there last week but maybe you'd be interested in this so Last week I've showed this pattern. We're going to do a pattern that is mostly known as a backup for the song uh, High Heel Sneakers by Tommy Tucker from the, I think, late 50s, early 60s. Absolutely amazing version that he made in the beginning. And then later on, I mean, this pattern as opposed to shuffling. Or slow blues. Now we're doing this. And with some nice uh, twists around that, I'll explain after I've played it. So if you know the song, just sing along. High heel sneaker, put on your high heel sneakers, and so on. Let's go. Thank you. 
This is one of my really, really favorite patterns. And uh, I guess I say that for every pattern I play here, but it's like um, you get into it and uh, most of my rhythmical patterns are something I could really play for hours. And uh, I've tried to not mess too much with, with the rhythm and basically this should be a backup for you. But I've also incorporated some stuff, some licks in between that can be an inspiration to maybe support somebody who is playing like a fiery solo or singing. And uh, these phrases are usually in between mm, kind of vocal lines in the song. So let me explain some of the stuff that I've done. Sorry. So the main, main riff is this. Same string, same notes, exactly the same as in a regular blues backup. So that's this shuffly thing. But then the jumpy part of it is this. Right. So this little open first string can come as a first kind of syncopated uh, note before we get into the rhythm like this. put it uh, after the first beat and together with that there's also a possibility to play this little hammer on on the first fret third string right, so. and this in between that I'm doing this is a chord. So the whole pattern here is actually changing between E, A basically, and then the third note here. This is the seventh of the E chord. The, this is a note E. This is the seventh, right? So that same note is also present on the second string on the third fret. So basic E chord shape is always right with a pinky on the third fret second string or whatever finger you're playing with it doesn't matter. Well, the thing is that we are actually switching between E, A, E7, A, A, A7, or and then E7, A7. But from these three chords, we're choosing to do either this low octave or to do it here on the second and the third string. So it's like a... So I'm playing the E chord and then second and the third string on the second fret. And then a part of an E7 chord, which would be like on the fourth fret here. Same like D7, that everybody's used to, but two frets up, that's E7 then. But now we're just letting the first string ring. So it's E, A, E, A. So now follow the basses with the chords, basically E, A, back to E, A bass, E. But it's more groovy, it's kind of goofier if we just keep the bass pumping in E all the time, like this. Let's just slow this down. This is the, like, when you want to learn this, just pinch everything at the same time with your picking hand, bass and second and the third string. Switch, 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 back to E. When you feel comfortable with that, then give it a groove.
means the bass is going to be steady like this, but these legs can be syncopated like that. So, and then this first uh, open string. Let it ring until I switch into the next position. So th this is, um, and then I, I turn this backwards. I play out. So uh, this here, this is the same as we're doing E. Now we're just doing the same pattern in A, right? If we would just move the whole E position to the fifth fret, and then you get this part of the A chord, and now just listen to this. playing in E. So instead of jumping on the fifth fret and do that, we can do the same thing in A. enriched in many ways but just to try not to play too much over the main reason why you're playing the song so if I would throw in any of these licks it would be in between the phrases like put on your red grace baby cause we're going out in a So while the verse has been sung, uh, no licks are performed. So that's the way I play it. And uh, there are artists who can play on top of themselves, like doing something more underneath the lyrics and all that. That's fine and great. But I'm kind of a little bit old fashioned with that. So I'm, I'm trying to put emphasis on, on the lyrics so uh, that I don't disturb people listening with anything else. All right, let's see. Who do we got here? Uh, Tom has joined us again from Spain. More than welcome, Tom. Hi, great to see you again. Why is this comment coming like this crazy? All right, I'll try to. Hola from Spain. Hola, hola. Strachnia, hello. Great to see you as well. Where are you based? Sounds like Serbia to me. All right. David has a question. Can you do this groove with a pick? Yes, but it's it's not the same. And uh, let me grab a pick here. So like... Uh, the best I can perform with a pick. I'm just not used to that. When I play with a pick, uh, a flat pick, called sometimes, uh, I usually play some some you know country, hillbilly stuff. That's a whole different way of, of um, technique uh, to play that. But in this, I'm just missing this. I cannot jump with a pick. No, like a As soon as I start playing something down here, I don't have basses anymore. And now we come to the territory of pickers who can do hybrid picking, which means that they pick uh, the basses 
uh, with with the pick, but then the rest of the strings are played with their other fingers. And I can't do that. I've, I've never been able to do that. I have some wonderful musician colleagues of mine, like Martin Olin here in Sweden, and uh, yeah, a couple of others who are doing that, mostly on electric guitars. Sounds amazing when you can really do it. But uh, on kind of either fingers or flat pick. And flat pick, that's hillbilly, country, some early Doc Watson stuff, Delmo Brothers, and all that. Music trivia. Okay, this groove was also used for the theme in Dunda Klumpen, a Swedish kids movie from the 70s. All right, that's cool. I'm sure you can play that song, Patrick. Hello, George, and welcome to the live stream. That's great. Uh, I find hybrid hybrid, hybrid uh, impossible to do. Yeah, it's 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 a matter of, of you know getting into the practice of that from the very beginning. I've, there's a saying: it's not easy to learn old dogs to sit. Right? It's like if I've started with that hybrid picking from the beginning, it's okay. But um, as I've, as I've met many musician colleagues over the years, I haven't met one single person who has changed their style of playing, like after 20, 30 years of playing and performing and having it, having it on, on that level of performance where you know that, okay, I'd maybe be able to, to do it, but I'm not sure how long it would take and do I have that time? Do I have the energy for that? And how much would I gain from that? In my case, it's just like, okay, um, if I want to, to, to play the, these songs like this, what would I gain if I would play it with, with the flat pick? Not really, not really much. Uh, there, there's, a, there, the, all right, my colleague, Emil, Emil Arnebro, uh, from Sweden, absolutely amazing guitar player and a wonderful human being, a great friend of mine. We played together many times, and I've seen him, like, one meter away, uh, playing. And his style is uh, unique. Uh, when, when when you think of, let's say, Tommy Emmanuel, and the way he plays, he can use his uh, thumb pick as a flat pick, which means this. Right, so he can play, he can take the uh, thumb pick. I can't do it, you see, I'm kind of cheating my ways around it. I never play like this, so it's just like, I know the principles, I know how he does it, so he just, takes the thumb pick and then he plays some finger picking and then when he starts to playing uh, solo runs then he just grabs the thumb pick as the pick and then he just plays those usual the difference between this thumb pick and uh, let's say uh, let me see this way Maybe it will, yes. So uh, the th difference between this and a regular flat pick is that in most of the cases, this is thicker. It's a kind of more sturdier plastic than a regular flat picks. There are people playing with very heavy picks, like two millimeter thick picks, that's okay. But when it comes to thumb pick, uh, it just won't bend. It's something that you need to get used to and, and play with it that way. Uh, so uh, back to Emil. Emil's technique is something that he developed from the beginning, I guess. I think he started with playing classical, and then when he got influenced by Tom Emmanuel and some other players, then he kind of developed this style where he can play the alternative picking and solo runs. When you get this thumb pick down and this finger up, sorry. Also developed technique where he has this so he utilizes open strings in different clicks 
actually, this is Milik. No, it's not mine. It's by my dear friend, Lazi Sekula. Uh, many, many years ago, I think 30 years ago, that he showed me this. Yeah, something like that. So anyway, there are many, many different uh, ways to play. So back to like, okay, should we try to change the technique because somebody says that it should be played this or that way? Uh, I'm not really sure, but what, what's happening to me is that when I play flat picking, and uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a quite simple player when, when it comes to that. So, uh, let me see. Uh, influenced by Doc Watson, how he used to play it, and I've played this song zillions of times, so, but if you compare my picking style, if you look how I'm grabbing the flat pick, it's not this, like, usual way of play, playing with the flat pick, which means you're angled a little bit downwards like this, and you're playing... See, I, I can't even play that way, although I know it should be... Many players are, you know, claiming that you get much faster when you play the right way. But, hey guys, look at uh, Ulf Makenius, fantastic jazz player, Pat Metheny. He plays with a large flat pick and he grabs it like this. And he plays with this angle as well, like this. So my angle is not this way, but this way. And that's how I learned from the beginning because I, I could only hear what I wanted to learn how to play. I just had like Doc Watson cassette tapes and uh, no videos at the time, you know, uh, early 80s. And uh, that's how I learned this one. Yeah, all right. That, that was a long answer to a very short question by David. Can you do this groove with a pick? Yeah. And George, who said, uh, I find hybrid impossible to do it. Yeah, all right, we're there. So, I think we're going to move to the theme for today. And that is, of course, slide playing. Uh, my absolute favorite technique and something that I... If you would send me to an island desert island and just tell me bring one guitar and uh, one accessory that would be my main sand and guitar and one slide that's it um, so we are going to be in in uh, open D tuning as last week song uh, glory glory hallelujah when I lay my burden down I've heard it for the first time by Mississippi Fred McDowell then Mississippi John Hurt and then many many other players and um, the way I played it for you last week was that I showed you the melody and that was played on the second string to start with <laughs> last chord change was just D G D so 
uh, for those who are here for the first time, you haven't watched the last year's live stream, I'll just do a short, short reminder. In Open D, we have the chords that we grab, let's say the fourth chord, which would be the G, on the fifth fret, or here, second fret, fifth string, first fret, third string. If you want to make it really clean, major chord, then it's going to be... So you grab this note on the second fret of the second string. But I like this kind of a... Right, so if I switch between G, D, G, D, then watch my right hand, watch my picking hand. I'm playing the bass, third string, and the first, so... So I'm not even touching the second string. So that's the beauty of the open tuning, so you can really select which strings you're going to be playing. And um, you can just choose not to play something over to play all the strings just with one kind of stroke brush and all that. Good. So uh, I have something uh, to tell you about the techniques and something around playing songs like this. But let's do the song first and then we'll see if we have time to talk. Right, we're on the, in the middle of the live stream. So, uh, the, the main pattern, rhythmical pattern with the chords without playing any slide would be this. Uh, oh, that's right, the G chord, that was the first one. But you can always grab it here on the fifth fret, on the sixth string, and the third string. So I'm only playing strings that are kind of in the chord. But then if I choose to play the second string as well here, you get that nice twisty, right? And then uh, the fifth chord, which would be A, can be grabbed here, A7, like this. So the second fret, fourth string, first fret, third, and the second fret, first string. So now you've got all three chords that we need for this song. So the rhythmical pattern would be this. Right? Glory, glory, hallelujah. So which means bass, chord, bass, chord bass chord bass chord and everything is down strokes with my thumb and I kind of I'm playing both kind of sloppy because I want more strings to be incorporated but you can also be very precise and play maybe only the bass and the fourth string That's one of the patterns. As soon as you incorporate these other fingers, you're playing this kind of finger style and you're choosing to play some of the notes. So if you just play this basic finger picking, that would be alternate finger picking, alternate bass, bass, one of the treble strings, bass again, one other uh, treble string. So it's like on the treble strings can be changed in any other pattern you like. Now play only the first and second. I'll go to the third string. So this should be the first step for somebody who is just learning how to play finger picking or finger style. And um, we are about to add the melody of this song together with these basses. And now, uh, I'm not a big advocate of 
forcing people to play exactly so they never miss a beat with the basses. For me, the melody is the most important thing. So if I would just kind of play the cheating way, I would just try to play the melody and then incorporate some other rhythmical pattern, which is in, in the back of my head all the time. So this is... Glory, glory, right? If you want to make it a little bit jumpy, a little bit kind of uh, groovier when you play, then you can uh, choose to dampen the bass strings. If you're playing on a regular standard guitar, uh, you can do it on your saddle here. But on this Resophonic guitar, it's kind of difficult to do. So I don't, I can't really dampen the basses so that you can hear the note. Uh, it's in traces, right? It's not really that. But what I choose to do in these uh, situations is that I kind of have this kind of dampened chord thing, right? So I have... melody lines that's where I go back to the finger style and you're hearing that I'm not playing there might be situations when I played like this if I would accompany somebody else if I would play with somebody playing another instrument or whatever but if I play it myself it's this is a kind of a song with a lot of feeling and it's I'm kind of praising the moment when I will when I will lay my burden down this can be um, explained in many different ways this, this these lyrics are yeah with multiple meanings to different people but I like it this so for me, it's a glory, glory, So for me, it's this Now I'll just slow it all the way down, and this is how it, I would I would recommend this to be practiced, right? So. So this is a way to kind of uh, show that I'm going to do something else afterwards. But it's like I could just kept playing this note. But I choose to play. So this is a technique that I've learned from Muddy Waters. And he used to play it in, in kind of uh, faster songs that he played. And it's like... Uh, or Robert Johnson, for that matter. Preacher Blues. But just goes fast, so... So this, these, these techniques with dampening the strings with your fretting hand in between playing the melody lines, that's very important. So I'm using it in the... So what I'm doing here is that I'm kind of syncopating. I'm not playing uh, like 
two, 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 three, four, one, two, three, four. The only thing that's one, two, three, four is in the back of my head and the bass like this. The rest can be syncopated. And this is the stage in your playing when, I mean, this comes very naturally after you've played for a long time. I'm usually meeting people who are, let's say, my age, which is 63, and a little bit below, and many of my students are, uh, or my participants in my guitar retreats or, or workshops are even older, and uh, they haven't played so, as many years as I have, as I have. So they've been doing other things in life, and now it's like, well, I'd like to give it a go again. I'd like to learn some more about the guitar. So that's why I'm doing these live streams. I'm trying to help people jump over a couple of steps. Or if you're changing an instrument, if you are um, if you want to learn how to play blues and slide, then you've been playing maybe jazz before and or rock and roll or whatever, electric guitar, and I want to play acoustic. So those people are uh, my kind of target audience. And this is why I'm explaining you these things so that you can understand where this like a dancing and jumpy rhythm comes from. It comes from keeping the steady bass lines in whatever pattern you're playing. Even if you're playing, let's say if I would play a high heel sneakers in open D. <laughs> So, which means that if I have the groove uh, in, in my thumb and the chords that I'm playing, then all the licks can be quite simple that come on top of that. All right. Oh, you guys are on, on hybrid picking. Yeah, that's right. It's like, yeah, you gave up on that. Me too. But I love seeing people who are really good at that. It's like, a, yeah, cool. I'm happy for them. Uh, all right. So uh, the syncopating is like a... So there's this important thing that I've uh, shown last week. And uh, I'll show it again so that uh, this angle is important. So. If I play a lick on the first string, so it's like, you see that I'm only down to that string that I'm playing, second string. I'm not covering the third string with my slide or any other before I need them, so I play. Then I dampen here, and then I go. two things here. The first one is that I come to that note. Do, 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 do. The school will be like this. All right? But I'm syncopating. I'm kind of jumping into that note before the beat. It goes... I come in just a little bit before and then I have the time to nicely vibrate that note. So I have the time to glide to that uh, fourth chord of G on the fifth fret. Seven, five. So the, the reason I wanted to show you this angle is that when I play notes on the first string, I usually angle the slide a little bit from these other strings. That way, 
I can be sure that I'm dampening with my index here behind the, uh, the slide. So I'm touching lightly, very lightly, first, second, and usually third string as well, just to make sure. So. And from the side, you see that my slide is just a little bit angled like this, not too much, because if I do that, I would touch the frets with the slide, which is not good. So basically, um, this is something that you can't see from this angle. You, don't, you cannot see if I'm angling or not, right? So now we're gonna change to a G. So I keep the rhythm going like this. a little bit sloppy here. I just kind of pick all together like a... Okay, this is a kind of technical jump. This uh, is something that you need to, to, to practice on because this includes... You kind of need to uh, dampen before you glide with a slide on these three strings. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of picking second, third and fourth with these three fingers, but that's after I've played. All right, and now. Now. So I do this lick first. Or. So I'm kind of going a little bit bluesy here. It's bluey, it's a blue note. It's not really, I'm going to the, to the third. Sometimes I might do that as well, but in usual scenarios I do. So I kind of play the melody, support the melody with maybe some bass note or just picking the chord if possible, if I'm on a chord somewhere. But then I don't really keep the rhythm going all the time which I find being a very nice dynamic solution for this song. It's like a... Now I'm back in the rhythm. of the melody it's like a and then my down 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 then I just play the A note the fifth string just to emphasize okay now it's the fifth chord huh? so I'm not playing no just play four notes on the uh, second, on the fifth string. And then G. Let's go through it. come to this like okay should this be, become a bit of a solo should there be any improvisation on top of the melody or what's going to be there but this is the main groove which is different from the last week's uh, episode when I only showed the melody itself now you have the melody and the backup the way I usually play it so if you come back to this live stream I'll try to go back to the um, I think I missed to make the chapter markers for the last two uh, live streams. So I apologize for that, but I will go back now after this one and uh, I will mark exactly where in the live stream there are these 
things that I'm showing you that are important so you can always go back and then you can loop it on YouTube just choose that part and make it repeat and just do it 10 20 30 times I don't know it's cool all right all right uh, I'll miss some of the conversation but I see that George and David were talking about uh, David said uh, he didn't have uh, a resophonic guitar. Yep, all right. So um, they are fun to play. They definitely are. And I, I love the voicing of this um, guitar. But let me tell you something. If I now, if I just change to my wooden guitar and play the same thing. So let me be... Uh, smart and fast tuner. Here's another thing that I can show you, which is also quite important. If you change from standard tuning to open D or open G, uh, by lowering some strings, you're actually making the, the rest of the strings that are kind of staying in the same pitch as they were, they go sharp a little bit. So uh, in this case, what I did is that I, I kind of, I went to, from D to A, uh, from D to, sorry, from E string on the first, uh, I went down to D, second string, for, uh, went down to A, from B to A. So it's two whole steps down. And then this string went half step lower to F sharp, right? So, and then before I would, uh, tune to the last string which is the sixth string which would also go down to D uh, I lowered just a little bit the fifth string I kind of went down just a notch on the knob here and then when I tuned the first string from E to D then it corrected itself it just went a little bit sharp and now I don't have to tune the fifth string so it's Yeah, sometimes even the D string can be uh, affected by changing these first three strings tuning. So it's like um, experiment and uh, it's different from guitar to guitar. If I take my silver tone uh, from the 60s with, I think, well, at least 35, 40 years old tuning machines, maybe even original, I'm not sure. Um, that guitar is a beast. I mean, you cannot tune that into different tunings within a set or you know in between two songs no it's one tuning per set and then you maybe switch it in between and then yeah whatever so we are on open d and on the standard guitar it's a totally different dimension of the sound so let me play that with a glass slide kind of sound compared to the uh, metal body guitar and I love this sound as well 
And as an advantage on this guitar, I have an open saddle, which means I can really dampen those basses if I would play it a little bit even more syncopated, like a... this uh, uh, uh. so from here I play the fifth bass but then I jump on the second fret and play the second and third string and then I kind of glide backwards a little bit and then just release the slide and play open string so so. This note you can play here. So there are many ways to find those notes in the melody. Sometimes they're here on the lower fret, sometimes they're up here and all that. But what I did here was a new lick or the new melody variation. Uh, so it's like a... So I went to this note on the 9th fret. And I went down to the 12th fret. So, 12, 9, 7. <laughs> this is a little bit sour. But not really intonated well, so... Let's go back to the rhizophonic. Because what you do get with the rhizophonic guitar is a bit of a workout because it's heavy and you also get these uh, voicings that are different. So let me just play the same lick. Mm. This guitar is more kind of mid-rangey compared to the a bit boomier and bassier acoustic guitar. Although this uh, rhizophonic guitar that I have, uh, it's a tricone. Uh, the reason it's called tricone is because it's got three cones here under this cover plate. So there's one here, one here, and one up here. And those three cones are making it a tricone where this uh, saddle is kind of resting on three little feet. And that's kind of, imagine uh, a loudspeaker when you don't have one bis, big bass uh, loudspeaker and you don't have the tweeters, you don't have the treble loudspeakers, you have three nice mid-range uh, loudspeakers. That's what the tricone is. You don't get that much bass as in a single cone guitar. And I know that one of you, Patrick, has got the sing, uh, uh, single tone guitar and uh, with one big resonator. That's a boomy, that's a very punchy sound and all that. This guitar, the tricones have a little bit more delicate kind of dimension of the sound. That it's not too much bass, not too much trebles, but everything else is quite smooth in between. So like... That's it. But if you kind of pinch a note and you play, see, it's just going right into your head or <laughs> into the microphone and into your loudspeakers or your headphones. So it's a punchier sound. It's a bit more body to it somehow. And the resophonic guitar is like, it's ringing totally different ways because the only thing that's wooden is the fretboard and the neck. Everything else is metal, and the 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 saddle is made out of. Hmm, let me see. It's either Brazilian rosewood or it's ebony. I think it's ebony this time. Uh, let's go back to 
new song. That'll be a little bit of variations to the melody and the way how I think about the rhythms and stuff that can be incorporated into this song. And I just love playing it. All right, let's see. Uh, oh, I've seen Yippie Row Boris. Great to see you here. A very old friend of mine from former Yugoslavia. Great to see you here. Ciao, study. <laughs> Excuse my French. Oh, that French was uh, that uh, Boris wrote. Uh, it, it <laughs> this uh, capo is a nice thing, but come on, play some slide, okay? I didn't play that with the capo too much. I just played a little bit. Right. All right. Thank you for coming, David. Always a pleasure. Yeah, George, um, just come back to the live stream and uh, go to the chapter and learn the melody. That's it. Yes, David, thank you so much. Clicking the live button won't hurt. It's free, just like this live stream and everything I'm doing here. So it's just my pleasure, guys. Fantastic. So, um, okay. I've been playing this time, not talking too much, so there will be a little bit more talking about some things about practicing and my best tips about how to learn slide guitar and the techniques around it, behind it, and uh, how you can um, express yourself in that way. So I'll do that next week, and we'll see. We'll see which song we'll, we'll take next week. It's going to be fun. Thank you so much for coming, guys. and. Uh, so, um, next week, yeah, nothing, yeah, nothing booked. I can do the live stream, no problem. And I'll be with you on the 23rd of January. So, thanks, come, thanks for coming today, and I'll see you next week. All the best, guys. Don't you shake my tree Get out of my orchard Let my feet just be Now 